I thank the Lord for another opportunity to come your way again, to bring his word unto us. Before I proceed, let's have a word of prayer. Our precious heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this opportunity to look into your word. I pray that you will breathe upon it and that this word will bring gains to your glory, bring gains to your church and to your kingdom in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In our last episode, I did mention that the Lord has appointed unto us his people a season of waiting and asking. I also said that in this season of waiting and asking that the Lord has appointed unto his church at this time, he expects us as in, on individual basis, on congregational basis, to begin to take out quality times to seek his face. I further mentioned that there were three things that were impressed in my heart that God's people in this season of waiting and asking that the Lord has appointed unto us should give their, 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 their attention to in this season. And the first was repentance and brokenness before the Lord. The second was preparation of our vessels to receive the latter rain. And the third was asking for the latter rain. Last episode, we dealt with repentance and brokenness before the Lord. Today, we shall be looking at the second aspect of this burden, which is the preparation of our vessels to receive the latter rain. The Lord has promised his church the latter rain, as we can see in the book of Zechariah chapter 10, verse 1. Ask ye the Lord for rain in the times of the latter rain, and the Lord shall cause bright clouds to be formed, and he shall give shower to every one grass on the field. That is the promise of the Father. But I say, church, the promise of the latter rain upon the church in this time is not going to come automatically. Though it's a promise, but it's not automatic. Why? One, God is not a waster. Two, God is a good manager, a very good manager of his divine resources. His Holy Spirit is precious to him. His Holy Spirit is, is, is holy to him. He says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 6, Do not give that which is holy to dogs, and do not give your pearl, your, your pearl to swines, because they have no regard for it, they trample it uh, under feet and come to rend you. God will not just pour out his latter rain on this church or the new wine of his spirit upon the church because of the latter rain. God will find here on earth a body of people, men and women, young and old, committed, faithful, serious-minded, people who have counted the cost, people who are ready to pay the price, who have prepared their vessels and have positioned themselves to receive the rain. It is then and then only God will release the latter rain. In Acts chapter 2 verse 1, we are told that when the day of Pentecost had fully come, he said they were all gathered together in one place and they were all in one accord. They were all in one accord. That phrase, in one accord, many a times, we said it's just it's an agreement between and among the brethren. And it is very correct. But there is a second level of understanding that the Lord has been making me to get in, the, in, the, in recent times. Concerning that phrase, in one accord. The, uh, the new understanding God is giving me to that phrase is that the desire and the readiness of the heavens meant a corresponding desire and readiness of the earth. What does that mean? Our heavenly father and his host, they were ready, desirous to release the early rain. 
And here on earth, there were also 120 men and women, disciplined, faithful, consistent, whose vessels were prepared and they tarried in the upper room at the instruction of the Lord. They never went back home when they left Mount Olive as Christ instructed them. They went straight there and waited on the word of the Lord. Here on earth, there were vessels ready to receive the early rain. So, in the same vein, God will release the latter rain on this church when he finds a people who have prepared their vessels. I want to ask, are you, is your vessel ready? If the Lord releases the rain now of his spirit, is your vessels ready to receive it? Am I ready to receive it? And that's why God is sending for this word to his church, both to the young and old in the church. God said, he, he was, he, he, the Lord will only release the latter rain when he find faithful vessels, men and women who have get, gotten their vessels cleaned, poured, washed, and prepared, and they have positioned themselves, men and women who have who have counted the cost and are ready to pay the price and their vessels are ready to receive the rain. The, ro the rain that the Lord is sent to his church is not for a decoration. It's to, it's to be used for a purpose, to achieve its internal purpose. He has purpose concerning the nations of the earth and humanity and he's for his church. So God expect us at this time to get our vessels ready. That's why he sent us forth this word. Church, prepare ye the vessels of the Lord, for the ve your vessels to receive the rain of the Lord. And why is God sending the rain? The Lord is sending the rain, one, to build and mature the church. Recent happenings in our world today shows that the church is not yet mature. There are no sons. We are the sons like Elijah. We are the sons like Paul. We are the sons like Moses, like Elisha. We are they, like Peter, like James and John. We are they. We know present happiness in the world today is showing us who we are and what state we are in. And that's why God is telling us, church, get yourself ready. Prepare your vessels. He's sending the rain to to grow, to build, and to mature us. Two, he sent the rain so that he can empower us to execute his divine mandate for the nations and for humanity at this last hour. Many things, glorious things, in Psalm 87 verse 3, we say, glorious things are spoken of you, O city of God. There are so many things spoken of the church of God that has to come to pass in these last days. The church is not going to end on the note of defeat. The church of Jesus Christ is going to end on the note of glorious victory and triumph. The glorious things God has spoken concerning the church that is going to use to execute in the earth in this last hour, they must surely come to pass. We can do but little without the latter rain. There is no much we can achieve if we don't, if we are not empowered, if we are not endued with the power of the Holy Spirit from on high. And that's why I'm going to say, get your vessels ready. In the days of all those men, they were committed. They were ready. They tarried. They were ready to pay the price. Now, the rain that God is sent to us is to execute certain things on the earth. In this time of the end, there are a lot of things God has destined the church to, to, to accomplish. Like in Romans chapter 8 verse 19, he said, the creations, they are waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Isaiah chapter 2 verse 2 to 3, he says, it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above, established above other mountains and be exalted above all hills. 
and many shall come to say, let us go to the house of the Lord, that we may learn of his ways, that he may, and we may walk in his paths. Out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So many things in Daniel, so many things are talked about. He said, they that do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploit. The Bible also says that in this time of the end, all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of the Lord. It is his people, his church, his covenant people that God is going to use to bring those things to pass. It is his people, the overcoming church, men and women who have covenanted themselves with God, who have given themselves over to God, who have been sold, who, 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 who have willingly given themselves and have allowed the holy jealousy of God to consume them. They have been eaten up by passion and zeal for God's glory, for God's house, God's church, and God's kingdom. These men and women, youth and old, God is pouring forth the Spirit on this last day into his church to bring this thing to pass. As the Lord God lives, surely it will come to pass. And God is saying, church, get your vessels ready for this latter rain. We must realize that a people must prepare and position themselves for the rain. The rain, the, the latter rain God is going to send to his church is for us to, to receive, not only to receive the rain, to retain the rain, not only for us to retain the rain, and maximally utilize the rain to achieve and to execute God's agenda for this last hour. It is for us also to manage the gains of the rain, to bring an unending glory to God the Father, to the Son, the owner of our souls, Jesus Christ, the head of the church, and to bring and to exalt the horns of the church, and for the full enthronement and establishment of God's kingdom all over the earth. That is what the rain is going to help the church to do. And that is why, brethren, we have to get ready. It is not by power, it is not by might, but by spirit. The church cannot go far without we be endued. We can see the present situation. The days we are in now is only but the beginning of the dark times. In Isaiah 60, verse 2, he said, Darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But in the midst of this darkness, the light of God will come upon us. What we are seeing in this present day, brethren, they are only but the beginning of the dark days, the dark hours, the beginning of times of sorrows and pains that shall come upon the whole earth. The church has to be prepared. The church has a divine mandate. The church has a divine assignment to fulfill. She must wake up from sleep and slumber. We must get our vessels ready to receive the reign of the Spirit. We cannot do all that God has destined us to do, fulfill if we are, are not endured the power. Look at the early disciples. They became changed men. The Holy Spirit is a changer. The reign of the Spirit is a changer. It's a transformer. It's a promoter. It comes to exalt. Peter, who was coward before that lad, became bold and he could tell the scientific uh, 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 council, tell me, who should I obey, God or man? That is what the rain can do, to empower us, to execute God's mandate in the earth, to bring judgment on the nations and prophesy judgment and collapse systems. The rain is to come to empower us. The church is not only to have the word. We have to be filled with the spirit. The Lord God will help us in Jesus' name. Like I mentioned, that the rain that God is sending, in needs vessels, clean vessels. And when God says, prepare your vessels, God is saying we should give the most earnest heed. The most earnest heed. We should give proper attention to take care of tendencies, character traits and failures, attitude and dispositions that negates God's kingdom life. We should begin to give attention to those little forces so that in the day when the rain begins to come, we will not be embarrassed, so we will not be intimidated. 
So we begin to take our time to look in world. The times, when you say prepare your vessels, it means God is calling for a time of serious inward self-examination to cleanse and to purge and to wash and get ourselves prepared for the rain. He wants us to get out, rid of the little forces that spoils the vine. He wants us to, to, to deepen our, our consecration, to deepen our commitment and devotion to God. He's calling for us to step up our spirituality, to be a people wholly given on to the things of God. This is not the time to play religion. It will fail and it's already failing. It's a time of the call for the wise ones in the church to begin to arise. He say, and get their vessels ready. Ye that bear the vessels of the Lord, be ye holy. For God is holy. The, ho the spirit of God is holy. And it's only, only vessels that can re receive the rain. It's only holy vessels that can retain the rain. If the latter rain is going to be profitable to us and going to help us to achieve all we are supposed to achieve in this end time to the glory of the Father, the Son, and of his kingdom and to exalt the church, then brethren, we have to, be, get, we have to get our vessels ready to receive the rain and retain it. We are not only to receive it, we have to retain the rain. Not only to retain the rain, to maximally use it. The rain is coming to do a thing, to help us to do a thing, to assist us, to help our inabilities and our disabilities, to achieve God's purpose in this time. So the rain is going to, for us to be able to, to maximally use it. Our vessels have to be holy vessels, sanctified, refined, purged, cleansed, and washed, and able to contain it. To contain the spirit of the living God. That is coming in a fuller measure upon us in this time of the end. And I haven't received it to bring gains to God. It is to glorify the Father. It is to honor the Son above them all. For the horns of the, fa of the Father and the Son is be highly exalted. It is to the church. God is going to exalt himself again. Where are the lovers of God in our generation? Where are the lovers of God? Where are the fathers? Where are the lovers of God? Where are men and women, young and old, who so love this God, this God of heaven, the owner of the heavens and earth, the very owner of us? So where are the lovers of God? This call is for us to awake. Where are they who have been consumed with passion and zeal? And holy jealousy for God's glory. We are there. This call is to you. God is saying, get your vessels ready. May we be jealous for God. May we be a people who are preparing to partner with the Lord. It is those whose vessels are ready at this time. We'll be, we'll be able to partner with the Lord to get its work done in the earth. And I say, Lord, your work, your work will be done on the earth. Let the kingdom of God come. Let this evil world pass away. These evil systems of beastly men, men that are, that are ungodly, who are monsters in their heart, bloody men. Let the kingdoms of this world pass away. The pass away. Let thy kingdom come, O God, and the rule of Christ begin. We need you, Jesus. We need you. Church, do you know that you are to bring joy and succor to humanity? Do you know that you have to bring the salvation knowledge in Christ Jesus to the ends of the earth? Get your verses ready. Let the passion for God's glory eat you up, O church of God. Arise! Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, truly true. With thanksgiving, I be a living sanctuary for you. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, 
tried and true, truly true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. That God will prepare us. That God will help us to prepare ourselves for this great day of the Lord when the glory of the Lord God Almighty will be revealed again. When the intimidation and the ridicule that have characterized the, Lord, the church in the past years will be taken away as men who have been clothed with zeal and passion and holy jealousy for God begin to take step to begin to consecrate themselves to the God of heaven to receive the rain. God will not release the rain except there be men like Peter of old, like the 120 men who love not their lives unto the dead. They started in Jerusalem waiting for the Father's promise and the instruction of their Lord Jesus. He said, tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Those men were disciplined. They love not their lives unto the dead. They consecrated it all and laid at the feet of the master until the day came. And when God saw their readiness, and when God saw their sincerity of their heart and their preparedness, the Father could not but release the rain on the day of Pentecost. So when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all together in the upper room. They were all in, he said they were in one accord, of one accord. The readiness and the desire of the Father in heaven to release the rain of his spirit, of his glorified son upon the church in this last hour must meet with a corresponding readiness and preparedness of the people, the church on earth. Fathers in the house, are you hearing what I'm saying? Mothers in the house, are you hearing what I'm saying? Youth in the house, are you hearing what I'm saying? How much of passion do you have for God's glory? Are you ready to partner with the Lord? Are you ready to partner with him in this day? May we be found. Lord, prepare us a sanctuary. Lord, make me and my immediate household, and my extended household, and the church of God and your holy people, a sanctuary to receive your reign, to glorify you in the earth, that the knowledge of your glory shall fill the earth as water cover the sea. That the hands of the earth shall see the salvation of our God as the word of God has declared. In Isaiah 52, verse, 11, verse 10. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we worship you. Lay your hands upon your people and they will not be able to take their hands away. Your hands away. Let your hands be laid upon us and constrain us to tarry. And make us men who are eating and consumed with jealousy and passion for your glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come, Jesus, come quickly. Let thy kingdom come and the rule of Christ begin. Let the present kingdoms of this world, the sister, pass away. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your church is, is, is going to come up victoriously. It's coming for what? A church without spot, without wrinkle, a victorious church, overcoming church. Full of power, full of holiness, full of wisdom, full of righteousness, full of truth. That is the church Christ is coming for. Get ye ready and join the body of people God is grooming at this hour. The Lord bless us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us as we yield to the dealings and to the voice of the spirit of this, of this hour. In Jesus' name, amen.